A Rubik's Cube. For Spudney. Did they ever tell you the story behind this? No. It's all lies. Reportedly, it was created by John and Pete. And he's, he's a famous pirate in the area. He actually claimed he wasn't a pirate. He said that he was a privateer. And he had uh, a letter of Kermit's And he had a letter of Mark from Cartagena, Spain. It's a board ship from St. Terrence that came into the Gulf of Mexico. But knowing John McPhee, the type of guy he was, I don't think Spain saw anything that that man took off any ship anywhere. <laughs> and uh, surrounded by his band of men, all entrepreneurs. Well, ships coming from hot tubbers. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, ships coming from, from Europe realized they had to carry ships to them with them to fight scurvy. And of course, they stopped on the islands to pick up spices. And you had the influence of alcohol. And what would happen is that they didn't know what to do with the spices and the fruit. So the fruit would uh, just rot, the spices would stockpile, and the men stayed drunk all the time. I think it's how purpose was for him, actually. Well, he wanted to, to come up with something that so he would utilize everything and keep his men from drinking so much. And this is reportedly what it is, you know, burn off the alcohol, add some coffee to it, give it a little cup. But when he made it for him, it was a big hit. The men loved it. But, being who they were, they saw a money-making opportunity. And they could put John and Pete that they could put on a show, charge admission. This would be the grand finale that could serve everybody at Cafe Brulo. Well, it didn't take long, but the men realized also that as they get to the end of the show, it was like a swashbuckling show and whatnot, that um, Jonathan took their flame in this thing down the orange run, and nobody's paying particular attention to themselves because they're watching all this, and they can pickpocket the crowd as well. And then a couple times on. Move your wallets. Yeah. <laughs> well, then comes Marie Laveau. And Marie Laveau was the local voodoo queen. Interestingly enough, she was always a voodoo queen. She was a haircut. And back then, unlike today, when, when women had their hair done, they would gossip back then. <laughs> unlike today. <laughs> Used that, like she knew things. You know, so and so's daughter's pregnant, or whatever the case may be. And uh, she, she turned it into this big voodoo thing. But when she saw this going on, she went to John and she said, John, you need to add clothes to the orange line. And as those clothes glow red, it's the eyes of the spirit world that open up to watch all this shit. That's how the lady made our bar, our vodka martinis that first day on Tuesday. And then right behind that, 
We're gonna add our fine Napoleon brandy. And our fine Napoleon brandy comes from St. Louis, Missouri. Who is fine? <laughs> Perfect timing, the music, I mean, listen, it's great. I need another one of these already. So that's why I couldn't get the uh, rind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I looked up and went significant uh, <laughs> I think this is another reason I need an outdoor fireplace. You put this on the big green egg, right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Ah, it's rain.